So I'm going to talk about the open uh, foundation model for materials um, uh, research that we are doing. It's going to be a little bit technical, so bear with me, but uh, I hope you'll enjoy. Um, so yeah, I'm going to first introduce you to the open FM4M model, then show you a little demo and then an actual use case where open FM4M was used in an agent. And then also a little bit about the working group for materials within the AI Alliance. So um, at IBM, uh, in the global material discovery team, we have developed this foundational model for materials um, that has like multiple different um, little models that are then fused into a big foundational model. And open FM4M actually um, is part of the whole foundation model. So we open source five of the models that we have developed. Um, so based on smile strings, selfie strings, molecular graph and 3D atom positions. And so what we're doing within the working group uh, in the AI Alliance is that we provide tutorials and workshops uh, on the model itself. And then the members of the working group can then use the models and uh, run the models using their own data sets and then provide feedback or even like contribute to the development of the model. So why is IBM even doing kind of this material related research? So IBM actually has a very strong background in material and chemistry related research, especially in the semiconductors and polymers domain. And with the AI capabilities that we have at IBM, uh, we are trying to um, develop AI-driven solutions uh, that help accelerate the discovery of new materials. So the limitations that we previously had were that uh, we would have multiple like small models or individual models like specifically for a particular use case. So we would have one specific representation and that was then made into a model that uh, predicts one specific property. And so what we did instead is taking all these kind of uh, different representations of a molecule and combine it into one uh, foundation model, which then can be um, fine-tuned for different downstream tasks. So, um, as you may know, uh, molecules can be represented in various ways. So with basic properties or optical spectra, atom positions, and so on. And we take all of these different representations and fuse uh, the representations into one, uh, make it to a model, and then with a specified uh, data set, we can do fine tuning and generate those downstream tasks. So for example, we would have some basic properties and the optical spectrum and can then translate this to uh, smiles. And so, as I mentioned before, we have all these different models and we then use this late fusion approach uh, where we have different types of algorithms to fuse those feature representations and can then uh, do the downstream tasks uh, here, mainly property prediction and cross-modal inference. Um, so out of all these models that we have, um, so the five models that I mentioned are now uh, since last year and this year um, openly available on GitHub and Hugging Face. And so yeah, I wanna go into a little bit of detail about the different models. So here we have the SMILES model which takes in um, the smiles uh, representation, so a string, and it's a transformer-based encoder-decoder model pre-trained uh, pre on 91 million samples. We also have a different variant that is uh, based on Mamba, which then accelerates the inference. And as you can see, we have different model sizes and also uh, the performance was increased uh, compared to other models on the benchmark data sets. Then another one is uh, using the selfies uh, string representation of a molecule. And this is um, based on a 
bidirectional autoregressor transformer model. And again, we have different model sizes and uh, improved performance over other models. And so far, I've talked about two models that take the string representation or text representation of the molecule. But um, in the molecule itself, we have, um, for example, atoms that lie very close to each other, like adjacent in like a benzene ring, for example. But in the string representation, they could lie very far uh, apart. So in order to um, consider that as well and capture the spatial distance of atoms within a molecule, we also have this molecular graph model. And finally, uh, the last open source model is the 3D atom position model, uh, which is uh, based on an equivariant uh, encoder. And you can jointly train it on uh, different types of data, such as the organic or inorganic molecules and crystals, and then uh, it will encode uh, the atomic positions into the latent space, and this can then be used for property prediction or to predict the molecular uh, dynamic. And so we have all these individual models that are then fused uh, later on. So the uh, fusion algorithms that we cons are considering are just naive concatenation, mixture of experts, dynamic fusion, and LLM fusion. And so I want to move in uh, next to the demo. So we have, um, we are providing a Jupyter notebook for like in-depth inference and so on. But um, so maybe if you're not as familiar with coding or whatever, we also are providing a user interface, like easy to use user interface on Hugging Face. And so I want to quickly introduce you to this one. So as you can see, we have like three sections. So the first is the data and model uh, setting where we can upload the data set and do the model settings. Then we have the first downstream task for property prediction and the second downstream task on molecule generation. So then you can either choose one of the given data sets or uh, upload your custom data set. So here you can then set uh, the name for the data set that you're using. And if you choose your own data set, um, there will be, uh, okay, I'm a little bit quick. Uh, this window where you can drag and drop uh, your data set. And so next you can select uh, the model that you want to use. So we have the selfie stat, the molecular graph model, mole former, smiles stat, smiles SSED, and so on. So in this case, we're choosing the selfie stat and the molecular graph model. And then you choose the task type and can also define what kind of classifier or regressor you want to use. And you also have the option to choose some hyperparameter settings. And then currently we only have the naive concatenation fusion type available. But yeah, as you know, or as I've mentioned before, we have different ones as well. So then you start the training. This will take roughly 20 seconds. So yeah, another five seconds maybe. and then you will get the ROC score. And then you can choose different types of visualizations of this model and also have the option to store this uh, with the dataset name and the models that you've used, the task and the ROC results. So now I want to go into like a specific use case where this open FM4M was used. So um, Merat from the Acceleration Consortium, which is also part of the AI Alliance, uh, they have this um, AI-driven chemist agent uh, called Designer. So here the user can um, kind of input um, desired like properties of a molecule and then the agent will um, 
generate those molecules and then using FM4M we will uh, predict the values of the properties and make sure that uh, yeah it's within the desired range of the user. So as I said you have the user input uh, of yeah please predict uh, or provide a molecule with uh, high water solub uh, solubility and then it will generate those models and then FM4M will actually uh, predict the values of this solubility and then go back to the designer uh, user output, uh, not user output, designer output. So this uh, was taken, extracted from like a Jupyter notebook. So for example, the user will say, make changes to XXX molecule and make it more soluble. And then first designer will kind of give you the information on how you can make um, a molecule more soluble and then will return the solubility value of the initial molecule um, which was predicted by FM4M. And then it will kind of go into detail about the explanation of how it can change the molecule and make it more soluble. So in this case, it's very hard to see, but this chlorine part was changed to an oxygen atom. So, and by doing so, it reduced uh, the solubility value from three point, negative 3.7 to negative 2.6, for example. And then it will go back to the user and ask if uh, this is okay or if uh, they want to make other changes. And then you can give additional instructions or um, yeah, say it's fine and then you can kind of keep going. And at the very end, a uh, designer will give you a summary of uh, what he has done and the solubility of the initial molecule and the solubility of the final molecule. And so finally, uh, so the materials and chemistry working group in AI Alliance, uh, the purpose or the focus is on open development of uh, tools and models or data sharing, creation of benchmarks or providing platforms for discussions and like talent growth. So uh, we have organized multiple events since um, this materials working group was launched last year in May. So we have had different workshops and hands-on tutorials and social events at different conferences. And we also have an ongoing seminar series. So actually the next uh, seminar will be in two weeks on uh, Thursday, July 10th from 3 p.m. to 3.45 p.m. by, and the talk will be by um, Professor Naruki Yoshikawa-san from the Institute of Science Tokyo on accelerating materials discovery with AI and robotics. So feel free to contact me um, if you're interested in joining and I'm happy to answer any questions maybe later in the um, networking session. Thank you very much.